What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Tano Brock, and I make videos about music production, mixing, mastering, live streaming, anything music tech related. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, check out the channel, check out some videos, and if you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. And you'll get updates when I post new videos and all that good stuff. So today I've decided to make a video about Zoom and music. Now this has been a relatively complicated and stressful part of my life recently. Just like many of you musicians out there, I have recently found myself performing concerts over Zoom pretty frequently. And it's been quite a struggle to figure out the best way to stream high quality audio over a Zoom conference call. I wanna be able to reproduce what I'm creating here in the studio over Zoom, and that hasn't been quite so easy. But after a lot of research, watching other YouTube videos, reading Reddit forums, and a lot of trial and error myself, I figured out the best way, from what I can tell at least, to stream high quality audio from your home studio, interface, microphone, DAW, whatever you got going on through Zoom and have your audience on Zoom actually hear a pretty good replication of whatever you're producing. So we're gonna get into that in just a second, but before we do, just a couple little updates and announcements. You might recognize a lot of this setup from previous videos, but I'm actually in a brand new space, and that's why I've been a little absent from YouTube recently. I moved across the country, I left New York in August, I'm now based in Los Angeles, and I brought a lot of my equipment, my desk, and my panels with me, but there are a couple new things that I'm really excited about. I got a new pair of speakers from Kali Audio that I'm super stoked about. I'm getting to know them a little more and I'm gonna make a video about those soon, so look out for that. Also, Ben Q sent me this really cool Screen Bar Plus, which is a desktop light that mounts to the top of your computer monitor and lights your work surface really nicely. And it has this really handy control where you can control the brightness really easily. You can also control the color temperature. You can make it a warmer light or a cooler light and you can have it automatically calibrate the brightness and temperature to your room. So I've really enjoyed using this. Thanks BenQ for sending it to me and it's supposed to really help your eyes um, and protect them from screen glare. Um, and so far it's felt really good and it's made my work environment feel a lot nicer. So if you're interested in looking into one of these, there's a link in the description. All right guys, without further ado, let's get into this Zoom business. See you in a second. All right guys, welcome back. So let's get into this. Um, there are kind of a couple levels to this. There are sort of the basic settings within Zoom to optimize the audio. And then there's sort of a more complicated issue that'll depend on your interface and what you got going on um, in the analog world um, that gets a little complicated. So I'll get into that in a minute. Let's start with the simple basic Zoom settings that you want to make sure you have set up correctly. So the first thing you want to do is actually log into your Zoom account in a browser. So I'm going to go into Safari here. I'm already logged in. Um, you're going to go to Settings here and scroll all the way down to the bottom or near the bottom. And you want to make sure you have this enabled here. So I'm going to enable it. Allow users to select stereo audio in their client settings. That's a really important one. And also allow users to select original sound in their client settings. So make sure those are both enabled. And then let's open up Zoom real quick and make sure you're logged in in Zoom. That's important because you want to make sure your Zoom client on your computer reflects your actual Zoom settings in your account. Um, so make sure you're logged in. And... Then we're gonna enter Zoom Preferences. So go to Zoom Preferences, Audio Preferences. So you have your speaker and microphone. We're actually gonna to get to that in a minute because uh, that's kind of where it gets a little complicated depending on your interface and microphone and all that. Um, so let's scroll down and um, optimize these settings real quick. So suppress background noise. You can leave this on auto, but I've actually found that it's better to leave it on low, um, meaning that it's not gonna suppress that much background noise. Um, and here we go, is music and professional audio. I should mention, you wanna make sure you have um, updated 
Zoom. So version 5.4.9, I believe, at the time that I'm making this video, is the most recent version. So make sure you are updated. Um, and in this version, at least, they have this music and professional audio section. And this is probably the most important section that you want to worry about. So you want to make sure show in meeting option to enable original sound from microphone. You want to make sure that is checked. Basically, if this isn't checked, Zoom sort of puts this strange compression audio warping algorithm on your audio to try to make it optimized for speech. But it does really weird things if you have any sort of audio content that's not talking, basically. Um, so you want to check high fidelity mode. Um, optimizes Zoom audio for highest quality music. Great. Um, you want to check echo cancellation. This is a little confusing because checking this actually disables Zoom's echo cancellation algorithm, which is what you want. Basically, you want to disable all of Zoom's weird algorithms. <laughs> and then finally, stereo audio. You want to make sure that is checked. Um, and again, I think this might only appear if you have this setting here in, in uh, the web browser enabled. Allow users to select stereo audio in their client settings. So really make sure you do that. Then this will definitely be in your settings and you'll be able to check it. You can go to advanced and on max there's only one option here, echo cancellation. You can just leave that on audio. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Now this is where it gets a little complicated. So the biggest issue that I've personally had when it comes to music and Zoom is actually getting it to reproduce stereo audio, even with this setting that I just showed you that says enable stereo audio. And the reason comes down to the interface you have and the number of inputs that is actually being fed into Zoom's system. So what was happening to me is that I was using this method that I actually made a video about, which I'll link in the description and up here, that uses a UAD interface and the UAD console software to route audio to stream a nice mix that you can create in the console app and, to, and then stream that audio to YouTube or Facebook or wherever you want to stream it. And so I was using that same method thinking that I could feed the audio from UAD's console directly into Zoom, and it would work just the same way as any other streaming platform does. You know, if I select UAD interface in OBS or YouTube Live or Facebook Live or anything else, um, it should sound the same as if I select UAD interface in Zoom. But no, it doesn't sound the same. When I select my UAD interface in any of the other streaming platforms, it reproduces the perfect stereo mix that I'm creating in console. But when I select UAD interface in Zoom, it reproduces this mushy, distorted mono signal. Even when I have stereo audio enabled and all that. And after some research, I found out that the reason is when you select an input device in Zoom that has more than two input channels, my interface has 30 something input channels. Even if I'm only using the first two channels, it sums all the channels into one mono signal, which obviously is going to sound terrible. If you have a nice stereo mix, you want that to be summed into a single stereo signal. And that's what I'm doing with my routing method in console, but Zoom is interpreting it differently. Zoom is actually taking all the channels, each individual mic channel, plus the monitor section, and summing it all into a single distorted mono signal. So that method doesn't work. Basically, selecting your interface as your input device in Zoom is never going to give you a stereo signal. And so what you have to do is use a virtual routing app like Black Hole or Soundflower or Loopback or something like that to create a virtual stereo signal that only has two channels and two channels only. You can then route all your audio, whether it's coming out of a DAW or whether it's coming from UAD's console or just from your system, Spotify, iTunes, or whatever, you can route that to the virtual audio device. And then in Zoom, you select the virtual audio device as the input. And since that input is only two channels, Zoom will then interpret it as a stereo signal. So let's go back into the computer and I'll show you how this looks. So I am using Black Hole. 
I will link Black Hole in the description. And there are two versions of Black Hole when you go and download it. There's two-channel version and the 16-channel version. Download both if you want, but for this, as I just explained, we want to use the two-channel version because we really only want two channels and two channels only. So, as you see here, I have Black Hole two-channel selected as my microphone, and my speaker is Universal Audio Thunderbolt. That's great because I have my whole monitor controller and everything hooked up to the Universal Audio Thunderbolt. So I'll be hearing everything through this, and Zoom will be receiving the signal through Black Hole. Okay, great. So let me open up uh, my UAD console. And if you don't have a UAD interface, um, the concept here will still apply. So basically, this is my mic channel here. You can see my signal going. Um, and then here's my whole monitor section. And if I play something on Spotify, you'll see it appear here as well. Uh. All right, yeah, so you see that that all looks good. So now we want to get all this information into Zoom. And if you have loopback, it costs 100 bucks, I'm pretty sure. You can do this without a DAW, but Black Hole is free, and I assume most of you watching this are going to have a, some sort of DAW. So I'm going to show you how to do this using a DAW. So I'm going to open up Logic here, and I have a new project. Let's go into the Preferences. And we are going to want to make the input your interface, the output black hole two channel, and apply. So now what I'm going to do is actually just have one stereo audio track and make the input of that audio track the monitor section of UAD's console app. That way, everything that's running through the monitor section of my interface, meaning all the analog inputs, plus all my system audio and any mixing that I do in the console app will be going into this one channel. Now, if you don't have a UAD interface, you might have some sort of app that came with your interface where you could do something similar. And if not, that's totally cool. You can actually just create a mix within your DAW and then send that directly to Black Hole while monitoring it at the same time using an aggregate device. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Check the other link in my description on live streaming with a DAW. I explain all about that and give a detailed tutorial about how to set up your DAW for live streaming using Soundflower or Black Hole. So I have this record enabled. Remember, my audio output is Black Hole to channel. So if I go back to my console app and unmute my vocal mic so it actually is running through the monitor of console, there we go. And you see we're getting signal here. All right, so let's go into Zoom and check to make sure this is all working. So I'm going to open up Zoom, create a new meeting, join with computer audio, and first thing we want to do is check our microphone and speaker settings. So go here, click this little caret. You want to make sure your microphone is black hole two channel or Soundflower if you're using Soundflower or whatever other virtual audio device you're using. And your speaker will just be your interface or whatever else you're monitoring through. So now we're getting nothing, and that's because we're also getting nothing here in the monitor section of my interface. And that's because my mic channel is muted. So let's go into console and unmute this. Go back to Zoom, and now we should be getting it. Nice. Perfect. Um, the next thing you want to do is up here, turn on original sound. That super important. Otherwise, all those advanced options in Zoom audio settings won't be coming through. And you can even click this and select Black Hole 2 channel to always enable original sound when you're using Black Hole. And real quick, I just want to give a really handy tip for all you UAD users out there. Um, when you're doing some sort of musical performance over Zoom um, and you're streaming your audio from your interface, you want to hear yourself, and you also want to hear the other participants on the Zoom meeting, but you don't want the audio from the Zoom meeting to be streamed back into the Zoom meeting. Um, and so I found a really handy way to get around that issue. And here we go. Go into Settings in Console and make the outputs one and two, virtual one and virtual two. 
Um, and then in audio MIDI setup, let's head there really quick. Um, in your universal audio Thunderbolt tab, go to configure speakers and make sure that the left is virtual one and right is virtual two. Great. Apply, done, get out of that. Virtual one, virtual two here. And I've already named it, um, but I um, linked virtual one and virtual two and called this system audio. So now if we go into zoom and we test the speaker, that's going to keep going. And you see that it's coming in here, system audio, which is exactly what we want. Then we can actually mute it. So we don't hear it anymore. What you're hearing is what would be streamed to the Zoom audience. But that signal is still going to our cues, which means it's still going to our headphones. Um, so we can basically hear the content of the Zoom meeting, but mute it for the audience so there's no echo feedback issues. So if you do have a UAD interface, that is a super handy tip. So that's pretty much it. You should be all set up. As long as this says turn off original sound up in the corner, that means original sound is on. And as long as you have all these preferences set up, high fidelity music mode, echo cancellation, stereo audio, and remember, very important, your input device needs to be only two channels. The way I've found to do that is to use black hole two channel to route everything into a two channel input. Again, using an interface directly, even if you think it's stereo, which it is, Zoom will sum that into a distorted mono signal. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful. If you're like me and you've been streaming concerts over Zoom conference calls, you've probably had issues with audio, and I hope this will help get past some of those obstacles. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you have any other comments or suggestions or ideas, or if you've found some other way to do this even better, please let me know because I'm curious and I'm sure it'll help anyone else who's curious and interested. So with that, I'm gonna sign off. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. All right guys, I'll see you in the next one.